Amen. Me too. I want you to take your Bibles tonight and turn to Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. And we want to carry on. Um, I don't know how much longer we'll be here, but we want to carry on with our series on how to win a soul to Christ. And so I want to talk to you about evangelism once again tonight. Acts chapter 8 in your Bibles. And um, we're going to start in verse 26. And hey, listen, if you promise not to fall asleep, I'm just going to let you remain seated while we read scripture tonight. And um, you're not going to promise that? Okay. And uh, somebody said, when you fall asleep during the preaching, that just means you trust me. It's like, preacher, I trust you. You go ahead. All right. And uh, hey, listen, do your best not to fall asleep tonight because I, I, I really believe God's got something for you this evening. Acts chapter 8, verse number 26. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, behold, a man of Ethiopia, and eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning, sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb, dumb before his shearers, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. And, uh, and I want to talk to you about that a little bit tonight, an exposition on evangelism. And so we're going to do just a little ex, uh, uh, expositional teaching tonight, here from the scripture that we just read, simple, uh, simple outline, simple message, you won't have any... Uh, difficulty getting the message tonight, but I believe it's going to be a help to us. And so um, let's pray, and then we're going to work our way through Acts chapter 8 tonight. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, and thank you for a good day today. And uh, Lord, it is such a joy to be back in the house of the Lord, and I mean that. God, I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God, and I'm so glad to be a part of this family of God. And uh, Lord, I'm so thankful to be here this evening, and we could just stop and just for a little while, we could just thank you and praise you. And uh, God, we thank you for the freedom that we have in this nation to do what we're doing right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the help to do what we're doing right now. We thank you for the place that you've given us to do what we're doing right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the Word of God that helps us in doing what we're doing right now. And God, thank you for letting us come to you in prayer. That helps us in doing what we're doing right now. So Lord, I pray that you'll knit our hearts together. And help us to learn from your precious book tonight. We pray for the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And Father, the best that we know how, we plead the blood of Jesus over this service, over this place. And I pray that you would bind the powers of darkness. And God, help us to learn from your precious book tonight. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Let me tell you a little bit about the book of Acts tonight. The book of Acts is a is a continuation of the Gospels, and specifically Luke's Gospel. In case you're wondering, Luke, we believe, Luke was the one who wrote the book of Acts, and he addresses this book, the book of Acts, <clears throat> the Acts of the Apostles, and the Gospel of Luke to a friend. His name is Theophilus, and we'll see that here in just a moment. And, uh, and Luke's Gospel tells us what Jesus began both to do and to teach. Now, hold your place in Acts 8 because we're going right back there. And that's where we're going to stay the remainder of the time tonight. But I want you to look at Acts chapter 1. So go back just a few pages 
And look at Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> it's important for us to understand what the Acts of the Apostles is all about. And so Acts chapter 1 <clears throat> and verse number 1, and Luke says this. He says, the former treaties, that word treaties means work or the former writing, uh, the former work that God used me to do, that you, God used me to produce, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, that's a friend of Luke's, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. And so again, uh, so Luke, the gospel of Luke, is what Jesus began both to do and to teach. But the acts of the apostles is what Jesus continued to do. Now, somebody says, well, wait a minute, pastor, but Jesus went to heaven in Acts chapter 1, and you'd be right about that. You're, you're very, very right about that. Uh, but the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, is what Jesus continued to do now through the work of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so it's very, very important. Uh, Acts is a book that offers, uh, uh, offers uh, a pattern for church growth. It's a book that records many great stories of conversion and transformation, for instance. Uh, it's the book of Acts where we learn about Paul's Damascus Road experience. And most of you are, are, are aware of that. You've, you've studied that before where Paul is on his way to Damascus. And God knocks him off this horse and the apostle Paul comes to know Christ as Savior. It also talks about Cornelius. And uh, Cornelius, of, cor of course, the first Gentile convert that comes to know Christ then it talks about Lydia, and uh, Lydia, of course, the first European convert. And then it talks about the Philippian jailer. And by the way, that's just a few uh, stories that the book of Acts tells us. But one of the main stories that we read much earlier about is, of course, the incredible conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. And that's what I want to focus on tonight just for a little while there in Acts chapter 8. So just turn back over there, if you would, Acts chapter 8. And we're going to camp out there for just a little while this evening. And as I was going through Acts chapter 8, and as we've been talking about how to win a soul to Christ and evangelism, by the way, we've got some great feedback off this series, not only from you, our folks at Calvary, but we've got some wonderful feedback from people that uh, are not even here tonight, folks that don't even attend our church. They've been watching the services, and they really appreciate what we've been teaching on Wednesday night. And so let's just go through Acts chapter 8. We'll work our way through. And I want to show you several things that we learned concerning this thing of evangelism. And I believe this will help you tonight. Number one, I wrote this down. First of all, we notice a man who was probing for answers. We notice a man who was probing for answers. Look, if you will, Acts chapter 8, verse number 27. The Bible says, And he arose and went, and behold, watch this, a man of Ethiopia, a, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Look at verse 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which you read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before his, his shearer, so open you not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Can you feel that? Can you feel the hunger there in this man's, uh, just the, 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 the pathos, the passion? And he says, I pray thee. Of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? In other words, he didn't understand. He wanted to understand. He was seeking to understand. This man was a seeker, but he just didn't quite understand. He just didn't quite get it. And so we notice a man who was probing for answers. Now I, want us, I want us to notice a few things about this man. Number one, I want you to notice his desperation. His desperation. To be honest, this is not really a story about a man who's simply probing for answers. If you read this story, really what we see here is a man who is desperate for answers. Look right here now. I'm talking about a man who's desperate for answers. Now you say, preacher, what are you talking about? Desperate for answers. Well, think about it. Here's a man, this Ethiopian eunuch. We're not sure what his name was. But here's a man that has traveled all the way from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. Uh, looking for answers. By the way, that's not a 
Listen, that's not an easy, that's not an easy thing. He's come to observe Passover. And by the way, Passover would last for about seven days. And so he's come a long, long ways. He's traveled over a thousand miles to get to where he was. Now, again, I want you to think about this. And I promise you, the Lord don't want you to get this tonight, all right? But, but li- listen, hear me out. Think about this. If his caravan was able to successfully travel for 25 miles a day, and that was usually back in that day and time, that was the average day's journey. They would get about 25 miles if things went good, if they were able to, to go that far. And that's if they ran into no, into no, no problems. Uh, the trip would have taken no less than 40 days, no less. Now, probably much more than that, but no less than 40 days for this Ethiopian eunuch to come to Jerusalem. Not only that, but he's a man of great power. He's a man of great power. And so he is a very trusted man to the queen. And so that means, you know what, he's got to beg off of work. You ever had to ask off work? And so this guy is, uh, uh, he is, some believe that he was the bed guard. He was a man that was so trusted that he was right there by the queen and made sure that she was protected. And so he's going to, you know, he's got to come to his queen and he's got to say, Queen, I'd like to, to, I'd like to, to travel. I'm going to be gone. for. It's going to take me about 40 days to get there. It's going to take me 40 days to get back. The festival is going to last for seven days. I'm going to be gone for a little while, for several months at least. And so he's had to ask off work. Not only that, but it would have been a very difficult passage uh, in fact, I want to encourage you later on in your study, go back and look at some of the maps, and you'll find out that going from Ethiopia, traveling up Ethiopia, there's, no, there's not really an easy way to get there. Uh, you, you've got to come through, up through Sudan. You've got to come up through Egypt. And by the way, if you look at that on the map, most of that is desert. Most of it's desert, and some of it's very harsh desert, very desertous. It's a very, uh, listen, very uh, difficult, dangerous roads. It was dangerous to travel back in that, that, that day and time. And so you say, preacher, what's your point? My point is, man, this guy's serious about finding some answers for his questions. I mean, this is a guy that's really looking for some answers. And uh, I really believe this. I believe the Lord had already began working a work in his life. And, uh, and I believe he had no doubt come in contact with some people and and God was working, and he thought, you know what, I'm going to go to that Passover thing. I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to see what it is, and I'm going to check it out. And, uh, and so uh, we notice his desperation for answers. But I want you to notice something else. Not only do we see his desperation, but church, we see something else here. We see his disappointment. His disappointment. Now, you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Listen, this Ethiopian eunuch travels all this way to try to get his questions answered. And guess what? When when we pick up the story in Acts chapter 8, did you you pick up on this? He's heading home without his questions answered. Now, if we're not careful, we'll just sort of read over that. So here's a guy that's traveled over 1,000 miles to try to get answers to his questions. And now in Acts chapter 8, in at least the, the part of the story that we pick up on, when Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch intersect, this man is going back home now, and still his questions are not answered. Look, if you will, at verse 30. The Bible says, And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Look at verse 31. And he said, How can I except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now, church, listen to me. We're talking about evangelism. We're talking about how to win a soul to Christ. And I listen, I, I'm, I'm just like you are. And uh, I know when you're getting ready to witness to somebody, the devil comes to you and the devil says, you know what, they don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear your witness. They don't want, to, they don't want that gospel track. They don't want to hear anything that you have to say. That's what the devil says. Does the devil talk to anybody else like that? And uh, I had a lady come up to me today at the graveside. And, and, uh, and you know what? It was evident that God was sort of working in her, in her heart. And, and, uh, and I, I took out a gospel track. And I, and I said, well, let me give you something here. And I, I invited her to come to Calvary. And uh, when you get ready to do that, the devil will say, don't do that. But here, here's what I want to leave in your mind. Did you know that there are people that are hoping 
that you will answer their questions, that you will care enough to answer their questions. Listen, there are people I'm talking about, not just in, um, not just in Ethiopia, but there are people in Union Grove, North Carolina, Harmony, North Carolina, Statesville, Iredell County, Wilkes County, Surrey County, Davie County. Uh, there are people who don't have a clue. I mean, they don't know what they're going to do. They're at the end of their rope. They don't know what. They, they've tried everything. They've tried drugs. They've tried alcohol. They've tried the wild life. I mean, they've tried everything, and yet nothing seems to work. Nothing seems to help them get straightened out. Nothing seems to bring, pre, bring a peace to their families or or their marriages, or their kids, and people are looking. I'm telling you what, they are probing for answers. In fact, they are just like this, this Ethiopian eunuch. They are desperate. They're desperate for answers. And so next time you get ready to give a gospel track out or witness to somebody, and old smutty face comes up and says, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Well, you just go ahead and do it in spite of what the devil says. Amen? Because people are looking for answers today. And by the way, it's evident they don't have them. They don't have them. And it's evident that ABC doesn't have them, and The View doesn't have them, and it's evident that Washington doesn't have the answers. It's evident that they don't, and so, boy, thank God, we've got the answer right here, amen? And so we see a man, listen, we see a man probing for answers, number two, quickly. Not only do we see a man probing for answers, but number two, we notice a man who proved to be yielded. We notice a man who proved to be yielded. This is beautiful. Look at verse 26. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. (laughs) And Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. That probably didn't didn't sound very tantalizing to, to Philip. I want you to go toward the south. I want you to go to Gaza. I want you to go to the desert. And, uh, and he doesn't know why he's going necessarily, where he's going. He's just left a great revival that's taking place in Samaria. But God says, I want you to go. I want you to go. And I want you to look at verse 27. The Bible says, and he arose and went. Isn't that amazing? I wrote, I wrote this down in my outline, and I blew it up real big and, and highlighted it. You know what I see right there? I see incredible yieldedness. Philip, I want you to go. And he went. He went. We don't see any argument. We don't see any hesitation. We don't see any question. God said, uh, God said, Philip, I want you to go. Philip said, I'm going. I'm gone. Man, just incredible yieldedness. Man, wouldn't it be great? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Man, I'm convicted right there. Wouldn't it be great if we had that kind of yieldedness? Wouldn't it be great if the Holy Spirit said, witness to that guy right now? I'm witnessing him right now. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, give a, give a track to that lady right now. I'm giving a track to that lady right now. I mean, we don't hesitate. We don't think about it. We don't take a deep breath. We don't think about, well, I wonder what people are going to think, or I wonder what people are going to say. We just, you know what, man, just incredible yieldedness is what we find there. And by the way, there's something else we see there. Did you notice this? Philip not only went, but look at this, Calvary, he went down. Now that's important too. He not only went, but he went down. Look, look at it again, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Hey church, did you know if you really want to see people come to Christ, it may mean you may have to go down. What do you mean, preacher? Hey, you, you may have to go down to people who don't look like you. You may have to go down to people who don't act like you. You may have to go down to people who don't dress like you. And by the way, I'm thankful that I pastor where I pastor, and I'm thankful that I, that I pastor a, a, a wonderful congregation, a congregation that loves everybody. And, uh, and, and, and I, don't even, I don't say much about this, uh, you know, but, I, but, but every once in a while it's good, it's good for us to talk about this. Well, aren't you glad that you go to a church where everybody's welcome? Yeah. Amen. Everybody's welcome. You say, Pastor, is everybody welcome? Everybody's welcome here. Everybody's welcome here. 
No matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter where you come from, no matter how rich or how poor, everybody's welcome at the Calvary Baptist Church of Union Grove, North Carolina. And, uh, and by the way, that's the way it ought to be. And if Jesus were here today physically pastoring this church, that's exactly what kind of church this church would be. Amen. Amen. I can promise you, if Christ, listen, if the sign out there said, Jesus Christ, pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church of Union Grove, I can guarantee you that not everyone in this congregation is going to look like you do. Amen. And by the way, for that matter, I wouldn't give you half, a, half of a nickel for these churches who are all about sending missionaries. Let's send missionaries to Africa. Let's send missionaries to Ethiopia and won't go across the road to win a black person to Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you what, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with that. If we want to win them in Africa, bless God, we ought to want to win them in Union Grove, North Carolina. Preach, preacher. I think I will. Amen. Everybody's welcome. Philip went down. By the way, you, by, by the way check, this, check this story out. He went to a man that was from Ethiopia, the land of the burnt faces. The land of the burnt faces. And God said, oh, Philip, I'm going to pull you away from this very successful revival. And I want you to go to the desert for one man. And he's going to look like he's got a burnt face. But he's precious to me. Yep. And I love him. Yes, sir. And he's, I, you, know what I, you know what I believe? I, just, I really believe this. I believe probably that Ethiopian unit went back to Ethiopia. And I believe he did great things for God. Man, I, listen, I believe God used him to do great things. Hey, listen, take your Bibles and hold them at Acts chapter 8. But turn over to John chapter 4. I want to show you something real quickly. John chapter 4. And look at verse number 1 with me. John chapter 4. Can I remind us of something tonight? Listen, I'm talking about sometimes you got to go down when you, when you lead people to Jesus. Can I remind us tonight that Jesus purposely traveled to a place called Samaria? But I want to show you something else in that little story that maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't seen. Look, if you will, at John chapter 4 and verse number, verse number 1. The Bible says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into Galilee. Look at verse 4. And he must needs go through Samaria. Now that blew the disciples' minds right there. Jewish people did not do that. When Jewish people were making this track, they would go up and way around. They would make a major, I mean a major detour rather than go through Samaria. Verse 4, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria. By the way, church, remember who he went to talk to? He went to a talk to an outcast. He went to, a to talk to a lady that's been married multiple times, and now she's living with a guy. And listen, she was, uh, she was the outcast of all the ladies in the city there. She had to go to the well at a time when none of the other ladies went there. And yet Jesus Christ, listen, Jesus Christ went out of his way to meet with this Samaritan woman. And by the way, he revealed to her that he was the Messiah. But look at this. He not only went to Samaria. Look at this, verse number 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. Y'all know what that means? It means drunken. Drunken. Now, words meant something back in this day and time. And I'm just guessing. I mean, I'm just guessing. The Samaritan people were already looked down upon. They were part Jew, part Assyrian. They were half-breeds. That's the way the Jewish people looked at them. They looked at them like dogs. And, and, and I'm just guessing that this Samaritan town was probably uh, the worst of the worst. It was a place where there were many drunken people, and yet our Lord went to this place. Oh, listen to me, church. This is what I'm saying. People are searching for answers. They're searching for answers. Listen to this little story. I read a story this week about a young man. He was out, he was out visiting, and he had went to several doors and knocked on the doors, and he he had given out, uh, he, he had worked his way down to his last gospel track. And he just had one left, and he thought, well, I want to give this last one away. And so he went to the next door, and he rang the doorbell, and nobody came. 
And normally he wouldn't have done this, but he just didn't feel like he was supposed to leave. So he rang the doorbell again. Nobody came. But he just, for some reason, he just couldn't leave. And so he rang the doorbell several more times. And finally, he heard movement. And a lady came to the door, and, and she just cracked the door open, and she said, can I do something for you? And it was evident this lady was troubled. I mean, she was troubled. And this young man just reached in his pocket and pulled out a gospel tract, and he said, ma'am, I just came by here to tell you something. I just came by here to tell you, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Can I give you this? And she took that gospel tract, she shut that door, and you know what? He went on his way, gave out his last, last gospel tract. Wait a minute now. Several days passed, and that lady showed up at the church. And she not only showed up at the church, she gave a testimony. And she said the other day, she said, I was at my house, and this is what she said. She said, I felt like I was so alone. She said, I felt like there was not another soul on this earth that cared about me. And she said, all of a sudden, my doorbell rang. And she said, I didn't go to the door, but it rang again, and it rang again, and it rang again. And she said, I was at my lowest point I've ever been at. And she said, finally, she said, finally, I didn't want to, but I went to the door and I opened the door, and that young man was standing there. And he said these words, ma'am, I just wanted to tell you, Jesus loves you. And she said, when he said that, I thought, you know what, maybe there is something worth living for. And that lady testified to that church on that day. I mean, when that young man rang the doorbell, she was getting ready to go in her house and hang herself. And you know what happened that day? Jesus saved her. And she came to church and made a profession. And uh, this is what I'm saying. Folks, listen, folks are looking for answers. Here's a man that proved to be yielded. Number three, quickly. Number three. Not only do we see a man probing for answers and a man that proved to be yielded, but number three, we notice a man who provided the answer. Man, I love this. We see a man who provided the answer. I'm going to say that one more time. We see a man that provided the answer. You say, yeah, preacher, Philip. Yeah, you've already said that. No, I'm not talking about Philip. Now, Philip was great. Philip's wonderful. Philip's a good character in this story, but I'm not talking about Philip. Did you know that we have, in Acts chapter 8, we have an unsung hero in Acts chapter 8? You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Not following you. Did you know that God was already working before Philip ever came in contact with this Ethiopian unit? You know why God was working? Because somebody, somewhere, sometime, gave this Ethiopian unit a copy of the book of Isaiah. And he's reading Isaiah. Look at, look at it, Acts chapter 8. Look at verse number 27. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. I'm just guessing this happened in Jerusalem. The Bible says in verse 28, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. And man, when he began to read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit began to work. Did you know it's very, very important that you and I give out the Word of God? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Psalm 19, 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Listen, listen, church, don't ever underestimate the power of a gospel tract. Don't ever underestimate the power of the word of God. You say, preacher, all I did, all I did was I just, you know what? I just took out a gospel track, a simple little gospel track, and I just gave it to somebody. That's all I did. Listen, what you did when you gave them the gospel track, you gave them the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. William Carey. The father of modern missions distributed thousands of gospel tracts with his team in India. And Adam Judson, who ministered to Burma, used gospel tracts to win many people to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
James Gilmore, a pioneer missionary in Mongolia, wrote simple gospel tracts to, in, to introduce the gospel to those Mongols that he met on his travels. And many of you have heard the name Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor uh, and the China Inland Mission employed gospel tracts as a dominant feature in their first wave of gospel advance to the interior of China. What's your point, preacher? My point is gospel tracts still work. They still work. They still work. I was reading Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wally Beebe's story this week, in fact, and Dr. Beebe was won to Christ by a gospel track. Somebody gave him a gospel track at the gas station, and he came to know Christ because of that gospel track. Listen to this little story. An unknown missionary distributed small booklets containing the gospel of Mark. Now listen to this. One booklet made its way to a Buddhist temple where it gathered dust for years. One day, a priest named Chu found it and read it. As the Holy Spirit used God's words to convict this, man, this man's heart, he hungered for more truth. Some months later, a friend who had visited a neighboring city brought two more pamphlets from missionaries who had traveled through. Years passed, and Chu's spiritual thirst increased. He later said, I was always reading it, the track, though I understood but little. One thing that impressed me was that Jesus said the way to eternal life is straight and the gate narrow and few there be that find it. Alas, I thought time is going on. The end is coming. I'm not in the way and perhaps shall never be able to discover it. Finally, though he was poor and rarely traveled, Chu decided he would journey by foot to a city where there was a Christian presence to find more truth. And while he was there, a Chinese pastor led him to Jesus Christ. And it all started with a gospel track. We could go on and on. Listen to this. One day a few weeks ago, this story goes, one day a few weeks ago, I was in the train station in St. Petersburg. While waiting for my train, I was given a piece of paper from a stranger, and wishing to be polite, I took it. I was returning to my country in Tajikistan to the village where I live in the countryside. My journey was eight days long. Listen to this. I just thought this was interesting. Several days into my journey, I took out and read the piece of paper that that stranger had given me. It was titled, Somebody Loves You. It spoke of God and of his great love for us in sending us Jesus. At the end of the message was a prayer, and I said this prayer. Something happened to me, and I met the wonderful Jesus. That's how they, that's how they said it. Something happened to me, and I met the wonderful Jesus. My whole life was filled with joy, and I felt so pure and happy. When I came to my village, I told everyone how I had met the wonderful Jesus. My friends and my family saw the change in me, and many of them prayed too. Soon half of my village had met the wonderful Jesus. None of us had ever heard of Jesus before, but we read in this, in this paper about the Bible. Please, this is what they said, please, can you send us a Bible? And someone who can teach it to us so we can learn more about the wonderful Jesus. You say, preacher, what happened? How did that come about? Somebody gave out a gospel track. Oh, listen, isn't that beautiful? And so several things we notice here tonight. Number one, we notice a man probing for answers. We notice a man who proved to be yielded. We notice a man who provided the answer. Look at this, and we're almost done. We notice a man who personally studied we notice a man who personally studied. What are you talking about, Pastor? When the spiritual need arose, Philip knew what to say. And he knew where to go in Scripture. Look at it. Look at, look at Acts chapter 8, verse 30. We're almost done. Acts chapter 8, verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip they would come up and sit with him. Look at verse, verse 32. The place of the scripture which you read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth. I love this next line, and began at the same scripture. Now, what was that? Isaiah 53. 
That's where he was reading. Isaiah 53. Somebody had given him a copy, or he bought a copy, of the book of Isaiah. And he's in his chariot, and he's reading Isaiah 53, and the Spirit of God is working. He doesn't understand it. And so he says to Philip, come up here and sit with me and explain this to me. And the Bible says that Philip, you know what? Philip wasn't intimidated. Philip just started right there in Isaiah 53. And the Bible says, and preached unto him Jesus. Now, what's your point, preacher? My point is this. Philip, who, by the way, was a deacon. Philip had studied. He knew the word of God. He knew where to go. He knew what to say. He knew the scriptures to use. He didn't have to bow his head. And by the way, nothing, n- nothing wrong with this. Don't, 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 you, don't, don't you take offense to this at all. But Philip didn't say, well, hang on a minute. Let me dial my preacher. Let's see if we can get pastor over here. Well, they couldn't get pastor. They were went out into the desert, in the middle of the desert. There was nobody else there except them. And so my point is this. Philip knew what to do. Now, if you're here tonight and you say, preacher, I want to know what to do. Listen, if you want to know what to do, you can know what to do. Amen. Amen. And so you know what I'd do? Man, I'd go back and I'd, I'd get every one of these messages that we've been preaching on Wednesday night. I'd go and, man, I'd get on YouTube and I'd look up how to win a soul to Christ, how to win a soul to Christ, the best way to win a soul to Christ. And, man, I'd watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it. And uh, we talked about mapping out your Bibles and all that. And that's, all that's great. All that's great. But I'll tell you what's even better. Just memorize it. Amen. Man, just memorize it. And don't even have to go. Listen, don't even have to worry about the map. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But just be one of these kind of people who says, you know what? I don't have to go to the map. I know where to go, man. I, I know where to go. I've studied. I know where to go. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. If people come up to you and say, man, what is it about you? So let me show you. Can I show you? Let me tell you about it. Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you about the wonderful Jesus. And uh, man, listen, study, 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 study. And uh, amen, amen. You know what? We learn what we want to learn, don't we? We do. And then somehow we know all the ball scores, and man, we know all the brackets, and man, we know, we know where all the sales are going on, and man, we know how to use the coupons, and I mean, man, we know all about our phones, and we know, you know about all these crazy games that people are playing on their phones and devices, and it's a shame we don't even know the gospel. And so, man, let's listen. Let's study, and let's know how to lead a soul to Jesus. And so we notice a man probing for answers. We notice a man who proved to be yielded. We notice a man who provided the answer. We notice a man who personally studied, and we're done. Number five, we notice a man who publicly receives the Savior. Look at it, Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And that man got gloriously, gloriously born again. You know, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea for some of you here tonight to say, you know what, before this year ends, Before 2024 ends, by the grace of God, I'm going to try to personally lead somebody to the Savior. See, preacher, I couldn't do it. Well, you can't, but the Holy Spirit can. And so study and be ready. Be ready to lead somebody to Jesus. I hope that helps you just a little bit. Let's bow our heads tonight. How about you? How about you? Man, do you have a heart for souls? you have a burden for sinners? Man, are you giving out gospel tracts? Are you giving out the word of God? Are you inviting people to church? Oh, listen, do you have a burden for your family members, your loved ones, your co-workers, your classmates? Are you 
ready to lead them to Jesus? Pastor, I'm not ready, but by the grace of God, I'm going to get that way. I'm going to study. I'm going to learn. And I want God to use me as a soul winner. Well, I hope that's your prayer tonight. I hope it is. Why don't we stand all over the house tonight, our heads bowed, our eyes closed. And right before I pray, let me just say this. Is there one here tonight, anywhere in this crowd, and you would say, Pastor, if I died tonight, I'm not sure that I would go to heaven. And I care enough to slip up my hand and let you pray for me. Preacher, if I die, I'm just not sure. But I want to be. I want to be. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you, and you'd let me pray for you, you just slip your hand up right now. Just raise it right now. Is there one? Anywhere, preacher? I'm not sure of heaven, but I want to be. Would you remember me? Anybody? Just raise it up high. Let me pray for you. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pause just for a moment. I'm going to come down to the main floor. And if you're here tonight and you need to be saved, I'm going to be here to meet you. Or if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I am saved, but oh my, I want to be busy in evangelism. And I want to lead people to Christ. I want to, I want to lead people to Christ. If that's you and there's something burning in your heart tonight, I'm going to ask you maybe just to tiptoe down to an altar somewhere and just commit yourself to evangelism, winning people to Jesus, being a soul winner. I hope you'll do that tonight. So, Father, I pray that you'll have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Lord, especially if there are those here tonight who don't know that they know they're on their way to heaven. God, I pray they'll come tonight. Let us take a Bible and show them how they can, Lord, how they can have a reservation in heaven. I pray they'll come. And then, Lord, I pray that you'll burden our hearts for the lost like never before. Oh, God, I pray that we'll be busy giving out the Word of God. I pray that we'll be busy witnessing. God, help us tonight, please. Bless in this invitation, Father, and we sure thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. We're going to keep our heads bowed just for a moment. And I'm going to make my way to the front. If we can help you, if we can pray with you, we're here. While we wait, you come. church. We're going to sing the little chorus tonight before we go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Let's sing it.
Listen, if there's somebody here tonight, and uh, while we've been teaching through this series, somebody that God's laid on your heart that's very dear to you, and you say, Preacher, I'm pretty sure they're lost. I sure would like to see them saved. Would you just do this while you're where you're at tonight in your seat? Would you just take a moment and just breathe a prayer and say, Lord, would you save them? And Father, would you give me an opportunity to witness to them? Lord, would you open the door? Lord, if you'll open the door, I'll try my best to be ready. And I would love to try to point them to the Savior. And if you know what their name is, I want you just to mention their name. I like to pray by names. And if you, you know what their name is, I want you to pray, pray for them by name right now. Mention their name to the Lord. Lord, please save them. God, I pray you'll get them ready. pray you'll draw them to yourself. But Lord, I sure would love the opportunity to point them to the Savior. So, Lord, I feel like, Lord, there's little doubt that folks are praying right now. God, I sure pray that you'll save these that you've laid upon our hearts. I know we have family members that are lost and without Christ, neighbors, Lord, that need the Lord. And Father, I sure pray that you would save these folks. And Lord, if it would be in thy will, I pray that you'd give me the opportunity to appoint them to the Savior. I can't save them. But Lord, I would love the opportunity to be able to share the gospel with them. And so Lord, would you open that door? And then Father, I pray that like Philip, I pray that you help me to be yielded. And God, help me, help me to be courageous. And God, help me in leading people to Jesus. Oh God, I pray that you'd work in the hearts of our people. And Father, help us to be soul winners. God, help us to be soul winners. I pray this will be a soul winning church. Father, I pray for these that are in the altars or those that have been in the altars. I pray, Lord, that you would meet every need. God, I pray that you would help them. God, just be that ever-present help in their time of need today. And Father, we pray through all of this that the kingdom, the kingdom would be built and that our blessed Savior, the wonderful Jesus, the wonderful Jesus, I pray he'll receive glory and praise and honor. God, we thank you and praise you for all that you do. We love you. In Jesus' name. You can look up this way. Let's sing it one more time while folks are finishing in the altar tonight. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Let me mention a couple things to you real quickly, and we're going to be on our way tonight. Don't forget the bridal, sh bridal shower for Miss Satina, uh, Saturday, April the 6th from 10 to 12, and uh, I believe they ask if you would be so kind, if you're planning on coming, if you would be sure that you RSVP, be sure that you see Miss Mary Thomas, and let her know that you're planning on being a part of that meeting, and we would appreciate it. And then we'll go to the next one there, guys. And so as we've already mentioned, Brother Harrison will, buy room, will be with us this coming Lord's Day. And uh, so looking forward to meeting these folks. And also the Pattisons will be here uh, all day. And so Sunday morning, 945 hour, Brother Harrison. And then on Sunday night, we'll let the Pattisons have a little time to present their work. And then this announcement right here on April the 10th, you pray for us. We'll be in revival next week. We'll be preaching revival next week. And so we sure cover your prayers on our voice. And, uh, but next Wednesday night, next Wednesday night, Miss Savannah is going to be singing for us. And Brother Evan's going to be preaching for us, all right, next Wednesday night. So that'll be a treat. That'll be a blessing. 
And, uh, and so you pray, pray for them, if you will. Then go to that next one, if you will. Then don't forget the Magnify Conference coming up just around the corner. Now, let me just say it. Let me say a word about that real fast. And uh, now, um, we ordered, just want to let you know, we ordered some beauties today. They're coming into the bookstore. When I say beauties, I'm talking about Bibles. Um, in fact, I don't know that we've ever had beauties like this that are going to be in the bookstore. And man, they are, whew. And uh, these are definitely not Ford Pintos. These are Cadillacs, all right? And, uh, and so we've got some beautiful Bibles that are coming into the bookstore. And so here's what we're going to do. We'll have our Magnify Conference in a few weeks. It'll start on Sunday with Brother Kistler, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to let you bring visitors, and we're going to let you count them all four days, all right? All four days. And so if you can get them here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we'll give one of those beautiful, beautiful Bibles away on that Wednesday. So uh, some of you didn't win the Bible last time, but this is your opportunity, okay? And we'll do that for Magnify Conference. And that will be, that'll be great. I'm going to let Brother Brandon come up, make a few announcements, and then I'll come up and I'll close us in prayer tonight. Amen. Let's mention this very quickly here. Our men of valor uh, will be going out April the 26th. And we're going out to the Crawl Dads baseball game. If you went with us the last time we went, we had a great time. Uh, plenty of food. Amen. And a ball game. Nothing more American than that, right? Uh, so uh, listen, if you, if you want to get involved in that, please sign up as soon as possible. I know there is a cutoff date before the 26th, so make sure you get signed up for that as soon as possible. Get paid up and see Brother Ricky if you have any more questions about that or need any more details uh, concerning that activity. Go ahead and take us to the next one. I want to mention two things real quick for the youth concerning. All right, so the youth, those of us that will be heading out to New Manor, will be leaving out this coming Friday evening. So you pray for our young people that will be going with us uh, up to New Manor just on the other side. No, you're good. It's not in there, brother. Uh, so uh, we're going to, uh, to just to, to New Manage Youth Rally. Uh, so we're, we're pray for those young people. Pray for the youth leaders that will be going with us and those workers that will be helping us out there. But let me make mention of this one right here. You see this one right here on your screen, Youth Congress. is a big event. It's taking uh, the 4th of July week, all right? So it's July 1st through the 5th. And the uh, reason why I'm bringing this now is because we need to go ahead and make reservations as soon as possible on this one. That way we can stay in the dorms like we did last year. Uh, the dorms, the college dorms are right located right behind the main church there. It was super convenient. All the amenities were right there. It was just a great atmosphere, a great place for us to get together. But I want to make mention of this because we need to know as soon as possible, if you're interested in going on this trip, let us know. This includes the young adults as well. That This is also a college, uh, so Crown College, if you're familiar with that at all. If not, you can ask me about that or look it up, but it's Crown College. It's a great college to get, it's a great college there. A lot of college courses as well. Uh, so they'll have a lot of breakout sessions, not just geared toward teens, but also the young adults in that college age group. So if you want to get involved on this one right here, let me know as soon as possible. You see all the information there. This same flyer is posted in, in, across the, the hallway from the teen Sunday school room. So you can message me about that for any questions. Take us to that last one real quick. All right. And our church-wide yard sale. I know many of you have been spring cleaning. Who's been spring cleaning already? There's a few of you. All right. Who's ready to spring clean? Time to go out with the old, right? Time to purge. That's me. When it's purging time, I back the truck up to the front door. Amen? Uh, so listen. If you're purging, let me encourage you, all right, if it's, if it's stuff that's not broken or completely damaged, all right, uh, if, it, if it's not on its way to the landfill and you just want to find a place to donate it, donate it to the churchwide yard sale that we're going to have May the 11th. You see the date on there. It's also on our main church calendar that we handed out at the beginning of the year. Uh, but we're going to donate all the items here. We're going to get them together like we done last year, have a big yard sale. We're going to start promoting this. We're going to have banners up at the top of the road there, as well as we have vendor spots just like we did last year. Uh, so if maybe if you're, if you're into craft or if you make something, if, you, uh, you know, if you're into woodworking or crafts in general and you want to buy a spot to have here at the church to be able to sell your own personal stuff, by all means, come find us about that. It's $15 a spot. And once again, that just goes to the youth. And what this youth fund does, it helps offset a cost for a lot of these youth rallies that we go to and events that we partake in. It helps keep the cost down across the board. So if you have any questions about any of these concerning the youth, uh, come find me or my wife after the service. That will be great. Well, let's all stand. We're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Let's all stand together. Let's pray together as a church. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you, Lord, so much for what you've done in the service. Lord, we thank you once again for the great Bible teaching and preaching from your precious word. Lord, I pray that you help us now as we go out into our busy, busy lives. And Lord, whether it be school or work or whatever the case may be, God, may we just be uh, conscious of those that are around us. And Lord, may we be yielded unto the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit prompts us, Lord, may we respond and be yielded in that way and act 
act accordingly. God, I pray, Lord, that you give us that holy boldness, Lord. Yes, we cannot do this in our own strength, and yet we know we need to rely on you for our words and for our actions. God, help us. Help us as we go about our busy ways, Lord, this week. Keep us safe. God, keep us safe as we travel home tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the church. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us safe here, Lord. Bring us safely home now. We love you, Lord. We look forward to how you're going to use us in the coming week as we go about our days. We love you, Lord, and pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. And all God's children said, amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.